way that all of your parents learned to divide is not using this strategy, okay? Unless I forgot, which I very well could have. But we didn't learn using this strategy. We learned using the standard algorithm that you're gonna learn today. Now, because you guys know this way, you know so much more about number values and place values than my generation ever did, okay? Which is a good thing, but now that we know that, we can go ahead and move on into the little bit of a quicker and easier way to do it, okay? So normally, KJ, we would take this five and we would try to multiply it by something to get closest to the whole number, 5,425. So what would you multiply by? Um, can I do 6,000? Couldn't do 6,000 because that would be 30 with three zeros. That'd be way too high. Uh, 600? Could do 600, but we could get a little uh, bit closer. A Let's do 1,000, okay? Because KJ, five times 1,000 would be? 5,000. 5,000. So we. You don't have to write this down. Okay, so we knew that 5,000 was close to 5,425, so we started with that. So we took a good chunk out of that number, and please, what could we multiply by next? 80. 80, okay. Because, please, 5 times 80 would be 400. Okay, so when we subtract, we got it down to 25. All right, so now, Matthias, what could we multiply by? Five times five, which is 25. Okay. So we solved that problem and it gets us 1,085. And that is a good strategy to use. It will get you the right answer, but it's not necessarily the quickest. And also using the strategies, we have to worry about those zeros so often. Okay. And that can cause us to get confused. So we're going to learn a new way that drops some of those zeros off and focuses on smaller numbers. So what I want you to do. And the first time I ever heard this phrase, I thought it was a, a weird thing, but it does help you remember the steps. I want you to write this sentence down. Does McDonald's sell burgers? Yes, they do. But if you can remember that short little sentence, you can remember the four steps to the standard algorithm for division, okay? So I want you to underline the first letter. D, M, S, and B. So does McDonald's sell burgers? They do, and that helps us remember these four steps, okay? So let's write the four steps down. So if you try to take a division problem and worry about hamburgers and McDonald's, you're not gonna get the right answer, so we gotta use this in a different way. So that first D that comes in that sentence is going to stand for divide. The M is the second step, and that is when you're going to multiply. Now, these steps will make a lot more sense once we solve a problem, but let's get our notes down for just a second. The third thing you're going to do is you're going to subtract. And then the last thing that you're going to do is you're going to bring down. So if you can do those four things, you will work through your division problem, okay? Now we're gonna do one together and you're gonna think, man, this is not faster, okay? But as we get the process of it, it will help you. And you, I, my class said that that's the strategy they're gonna use from now on. I hope we get to that same point, okay? So let's do that same problem we did up on the board. 5,425 divided by five. I want you to write it down sideways first. Now, just like with the big seven, the number that comes first goes on the inside, but notice we're gonna use a different sign whenever we use the standard algorithm. So it's not the big seven, it's very similar, it just drops off that long line going down. Because instead of going down, we're gonna be writing our numbers across the top. So 5,425 goes on the inside, and we're dividing it by five, which goes on the outside. Okay. Now, with the big seven, we look at that whole number, 5,425. Here, we're going to go number by number. So we're going to think, how many times would that five just go into that first number? 
So someone raise your hand and tell me, how many times could five go into five? That's our division part. Mason? Once. So we're going to put one right there on top because it went into five one time. So now we do our multiply part. So Jordan, five times one would be five. So we write it down right there underneath it. So now, please, we're going to take those fives and we're going to do what with them? Not yet. We already multiplied. Subtract. We're going to subtract them. So please, five minus five would be zero. Okay. Now, the next step, step number four, Matthias says to bring down. And that means that you're going to take the next number and you're going to bring it down. So draw that arrow to show that you're bringing that four down. Okay. Now, are we finished? No. No. So once you bring down, you have to restart your four steps. So draw an arrow going back to the front. Okay. But now, KJ, we're looking at the five and the number that we just brought down and created. So, KJ, how many times could five go into four? No, no. None. So, none would be represented by what number? No. Zero. zero. So, we're going to put a zero on top of that four because five wouldn't go into that four. So, KJ, five times zero would be zero. zero and then we subtract. So, KJ, four minus zero would leave us with four. four. All right. So, we've... Divided, we multiplied, we subtracted. So now, please, we're going to bring down the, the next number, that 2. So we're going to pull that 2 down. Okay. Now we go back to the top, top and we start to divide again. Now, when we're dividing, we're asking ourselves, how many times will that 5 go into that bottom number? So, Patrick, how many times would 5 go into 42? 8. Eight. Because, Patrick, 5 times 8 would be 40. So when we subtract, we're left with 2, and then we bring down the last number, which is a 5. Okay. So we're going to start again. So, Christian, how many times could 5 go into 25? 5. And, Christian, 5 times 5 is 25. So when we subtract, we're left with 0. And our final answer is going to be right there on top, 1,085. Did that give us the same answer from the big seven? Yes. yes. Now, the reason why I like the standard algorithm, okay, is because it really just, you have to know your multiplication and division facts. You don't have to worry about all of those zeros, okay? So it makes the numbers a lot smaller, which to me is easier to handle, okay? You can also do this a little bit faster once we're not having to think about the process. Now today, that's the only thing we're practicing is that process, okay? Now there's a couple things we have to remember while we do this. So I want you to write this down. So I want you to put there must be a number on top of each inside number. When I'm solving this problem, there has to be a number on top of all of those inside numbers. Just like when KJ said 5 doesn't go into 4, I can't just leave it blank. I have to put a 0. If I left that 0 off, I would have got the completely different answer of 185. Okay. All right, so let's try another one. So I want you to write this down. Let's take 7,426 divided by 3. We're going to use this new way of dividing. So somebody tell me, which number is going to go on the inside of my division problem? Jordan? The number that comes first goes on the inside. So that would be 7,426. So that means, Angel, which number goes on the outside? The 3. First number goes on the inside, the second number goes on the outside. Now, am I worried about that whole 7,426? Yeah. No, we're going to take it number by number. So to start with, John Mark, I'm just curious about the 3 and the 7. So, John Mark, how many times could 3 go into just that 7? Twice. Because, John Mark, 3 times 2 would be 
six. And then John Mark, when we subtract seven minus six would be, and then I can bring down the four. Very good. So notice over and over again, it's just asking how many times it will go, which is dividing. It's multiplying, subtracting, and bringing down and starting again, okay? So now, Khalees, which two numbers am I focused on? The three and the four? Not just the four. Mm -hmm. You're right with the four, but it's not just the four. Fourteen, okay? So it's both of those numbers on bottom. So, Khalees, what times three would get us closest to fourteen? Four. That's cool. It's three times four would be 12. So please, when we subtract 14 minus 12 would leave us with two, and then we can bring down the two. Okay. So now, Christian, we're focused on the three and the 22. So Christian, how many times could three go into 22? Seven. Because Christian, three times seven would be 21. So when we subtract, Christian, 22 minus 21 would be 1. And then we can bring down the 6. Okay. So now, Isabella, we're focused on the 3 and the 16. So, Isabella, how many times could 3 go into 16? I think I could get a little bit closer than just 3 times 3. Got to get as close as I can. Five, very good. Because Isabella, three times five is 15. 15. So when we subtract, Isabella, 16 minus 15 would leave us with one, okay? Now, can three go into one? No. no. Is there anything else to bring down? No. no. so that one is gonna be the what? Remainder. remainder, very good. So we're gonna bring that to the top as the remainder. So our final answer is 2,475 remainder one. Now, I'm glad Isabella said three just a second ago, because that leads us to our next note I need you to write down. So I want you to put that we must multiply to get as close as possible. So if I don't get as close as possible as I can, Mason, I'm going to end up making a mistake that's going to lead to an incorrect answer. So I must multiply to get as close as possible as I can. Okay. So I don't want you to write this down, but I just want you to watch for just a second. Let's say I had 542 divided by 2. Okay. Now, what times 2 would get me closest to 5? Mason? Just to, just remember, we don't look at the whole number. We just look at the 2 and the 5. So what times 2 would get us closest to 5? 2. Because, two. Mason, 2 times 2 would be 4. So when we subtract, we're left with 1. Now, here's the deal. When you subtract, this number that you get must be lower than the outside number. If it's the same or higher, you could have multiplied more. So let's look at that. So if I had 14, what times 2 would get me closest to 14? Jordan? 7. Seven. But let's say that I was got confused and I put 6. Now, KJ, 6 times 2 would be 12. 12. So when I subtract, I'm left with 2. Is that number that I subtracted the same or higher than the outside number? The same. The same. So that tells me I've made a mistake. Because when I bring the 2 down... How many times would 2 go into 22, Khalees? 11. Your answer should not be a two-digit number there. It should be between 0 and 9. So remember, when you subtract, this number cannot be bigger or the same as that outside number. It has to be something smaller, okay? You didn't write it. You didn't have to write it. All right, so real quick before we get ready for lunch, let's do one last one together and one on our own. Okay, so I want you to write that problem down. 6,321 divided by 4. Okay, so when we set it up, please, which number is the inside number? 6,321. Which one's the outside number? 
the four. The first number goes on the inside, the second number goes on the outside. Okay. So now, Caleb, to start with, we're going to focus on the four and the six. six. So, Caleb, how many times could four go into six? One. Just one. Because, Caleb, four times one is four. four. So when we subtract six minus four would be two. two. And now we can bring down the three. Okay. So when I subtracted, I got two. That two is underneath four, so now I know that I'm good. So now, Angel, I'm focused on the 4 and the 23. So, Angel, how many times could 4 go into 23? Say it again. Now, 4 times 7 would be what? 28. That'd be too high. So i got to keep it under 23, but get as close as I can. 5. I like 5. Because, Angel, 4 times 5 is 20. So when we subtract Angel, 23 minus 20 would leave us with? Three, and then we bring down the two. Okay, so now Christian, we're focused on the four and the 32. So Christian, how many times could four go into 32? Because four times eight is 32. So Christian, when we subtract, we get zero. Now, am I finished? No, police, I still need to bring down the one. So KJ, can four go into one? No, but that's not our remainder yet because there's not a number on top of that one. So, KJ, what do I put on top of that one? Um, a zero, because if it can't go, that would be the zero. So now when we subtract, we get one. Is there anything else to bring down? No, no so that one would be the remainder. remainder. So our final answer is 1,580 remainder one. Do we think we could try one on our own? No. <laughs> All right, I want you to try one on your own just to see. Now, I know we've only done four problems or five problems, so not many. I want you to put 7,654 divided by three. I want you to use this new strategy. Let you go until you get confused. Once you get confused, put your pencil down. Try to go as far as you can, all the way to the final answer. Think about the things we've said. To start with, we focus on the outside number and the first number. Then we go through our steps. Divide, multiply, subtract, and bring down. And we start again. things to start with. That 3 and the 7, I see the right number on top of that. We subtracted, we brought down, and we did it again. Alright, so let's check this one, then we'll break for lunch, okay? So on this problem, Caleb, which number goes on the inside? Very good. That first number goes on the inside, 7,654, which means, Caleb, the outside number is going to be 3. All right, so to start with, Isabella, we're only going to focus on the 3 and the 7. So, Isabella, how many times could 3 go into 7? Two, because three times two is six. I saw a lot of this going on. That was off to a good start. So now, Isabella, I've divided and I've multiplied, so what do I do with that seven and the six? Subtract. Subtract. So, Isabella, seven minus six would be one. And then the last thing we have to do is bring down. So, Isabella, what number do we bring down? The six. We take that next number and bring it down one at a time. Okay, so let's start again. 
So now, Chloe's, we're focused on the three and the 16. 16. So how many times could three go into 16? Five. Because five, three times five is 15. 15. So when we subtract, we get, yeah. and we bring down the five. five. Very good. Okay. So now we can start again. So, Jordan, now we're focused on the three and the 15. So what? how many times could three go into 15? Because three times five is... 15. So we subtract, we get 0. And Jordan, we bring down the 4. Okay, so we've got one left. So Mason, now we're focused on the 3 and the 4. So how many times could 3 go into 4? Because 3 times 1 is 3. So when we subtract, we're left with 1. Now there's nothing else to bring down. And that 1 is too small. So Avery, that 1 would be our remainder. So our final answer, 2,551 remainder one, okay? Now, not have any homework on this tonight, but I do want you to show your parents what we're learning, just like when we did standard algorithm and they were happy because they know how to do that strategy. They'll know how to do this one as well. They'll be excited to show you um, some of their problems. So make sure you tell them.